Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener, are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen Robinson, and I am your host. And today we have a very special guest, Joshua George, who is the owner and founder of ClickSlice, an award-winning SEO agency based in London. He has been involved in the SEO industry since 2015 and has quickly made a name for himself as an established global lecturer who pioneers making SEO education more accessible across the globe. Welcome to the podcast, Joshua. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. No problem, man. And I'm I'm really excited to talk to you, man, about SEO because, you know, as you and I know, it's a, it's a huge area. I mean, we could probably talk about um, SEO for like days and days because there's so many yeah. areas that you can kind of go into relating to, for sure. um, you know, e-commerce and, and you know, uh, SEO for e-commerce company. But today, you know, we're specifically going to be talking about how to build powerful backlinks that are going to supercharge your store's visibility and just increase your sales. So that's that's the topic of today. But before we do get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and, you know, specifically how you got into what you're doing today? Sure. So, yeah, as you already said, my name is Joshua George, probably the most British name you could ever have. So I own an SEO agency called ClickSlice. 95% of our clients are e-commerce. So it's pretty much an e-commerce focused SEO agency. And I've been doing SEO since 2015, so eight years now. I initially got involved in the SEO industry as an end result of eBay dropshipping. So in 2014 slash 2015 as well, I used to own one of the biggest eBay accounts in the UK. And we was just basically dropshipping items from Amazon over to eBay. It was going really, really well. But if anyone has sold on eBay before, you will know pretty much anything you sell, you have to pay a FVF, a final value fee. So if you sell a Steam mop for £100 or $100, you have to give eBay 10% of that. So our store was going really, really well. And we was paying thousands every single month in eBay fees. So I said, hey, I'm going to pot that to the side. I'm going to make my own e-commerce website and generate the sales myself. So I did that, built out the website, had all my products to sell. She spent months building the website. And then guess what? Site went live. I had no traffic, no sales. So I did what any e-commerce store owner would do. Go onto Google, how to get my website ranking at the top of Google, right. discovered SEO, and pretty much my future took a different direction. I started to become obsessed with SEO, learn it within two years, and now I offer it as a service to other e-commerce businesses. Gotcha, gotcha. That, that's awesome. And I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I love that, you know, how your company was really based out of what you learned to help grow your business. You know, you mentioned, sure. you know, you left uh, eBay, started your own site, you know, direct to consumer sales and, um, you know, had no sales. And then, you know, just did some some research and got into SEO and we were successful growing your sales and then said, okay, why don't I help other businesses do the same thing? So that's, that's, that's some good stuff, man. Um, yeah, I've had so many people that have come on the podcast that have 
told me about how their company was birthed out of, uh, you know, a need that they had themselves. Yeah. And then, you know, that was uh, the result of that was a business that they then develop to help others so um, yeah, it's yeah. it's so powerful like i've done seo for a lot of my family members businesses as well and you know okay. just literally revolutionized the sales like they're generating through the website and you know they managed to quit the jobs nine to fives and the you okay. know all in online so it's a really massive skill to have especially in this digital age yeah 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 for sure for sure uh well great well you know as i mentioned uh at the top of the episode we're going to be talking about uh backlinks and 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 uh and everything around that with regards to an e-commerce business. So I guess where we want to start is really, if you can just explain just what are this concept of a backlinks or what of what's the concept of backlinks and their importance in e-commerce SEO. So, you know, for people that may not be familiar with the term. Sure. So I would say before I touch on the backlinks, I think it'd be good to explain probably two of the most important things that your website must convey to Google to rank number one. And the first is what we call relevancy. So if Google doesn't deem your website to be relevant to a topic, then it's not going to rank your website for your keywords related to that topic. For example, imagine you sell wireless mouses, right? If Google believes your website has nothing to do with wireless mouses, then whenever someone carries out a search for wireless mouse, Google's not going to return your website as it doesn't as it doesn't deem it relevant to that topic. So relevancy is a really big factor. That's probably the most important thing when it comes to SEO. The second thing is what we call authority. So how authoritative your website is. So this is where I'll touch into backlinks. And this is really important to note because one of the easiest ways you can increase your relevancy is by publishing lots of blogs on your e-commerce store. So again, you can publish 10 blogs on wireless mouses, the pros and cons of wireless mouses, how much do wireless mouses cost and you know anything to do with that topic, right? However, all these other e-commerce sites can also do that. So when you've got five e-commerce sites and they've all got 10 blogs all saying the same thing, the relevancy is pretty much the same, right? So which one does Google rank above the other? And this is where backlinks come into play. So the way you can increase the authority of your website is by building what we call backlinks. And a backlink in layman's terms is simply a mention of your website on an external website. And a link is essentially a vote of confidence when it comes to SEO. And Google looks at how many backlinks you have to determine essentially how trustworthy and how popular your website is. Backlinks are still and will always be one of the biggest ranking factors in Google. So essentially, it's about going out there and conveying to Google your website is authoritative and other websites actually vouch for your content by linking to your store. Great, great. Yeah, thank you for that that uh, breakdown for people that aren't familiar with it. And yeah, it's really interesting. Like you said, it's it's one of the main factors that Google does use that that hasn't changed for for quite no. some time now. And, you know, I'm just really wondering, is that going to ever change? You know, there's a lot of things going on these days We've with the, the AIs of the world, the chat GPTs. And, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of speculation as to where search is going to go. And so, yeah, it will be interesting to see um, if that ever does change with regards to Google's algorithm. For sure. Do you know what? I actually see backlinks becoming more important, okay. especially now people can generate content very easily and there's right, so true, many ai true. tools out there and if, right. if all these sites are spitting out content content like non-stop content then what is going to be the thing that you know makes you stand out from the crowd so to speak and right. it's going to be making sure your site is authoritative because yes you can publish 100 blog posts in your e-commerce space and get that topical relevancy that i spoke about really important to build relevancy uh -huh. however that's just one part of the picture yeah. you need to make sure your site's authoritative. So the sites that are building backlinks now and I'm investing in a solid backlink profile, yeah. those are the ones who are going to be winning by the end of this year and pretty much every year to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. You're very true because, yeah, they, they've got to use some other factor because mm -hmm. there's going to be so many tools these days. So many people are going to start be putting out all of this content. And, you know, it's going to be good content. Um, you know, there's certain things, of course, that, you know, the, the, the speculation now is that Google is going to be looking for AI generated content. So you do got to be a little bit exactly. careful because there are indicators that it, it can pick up on that to tell that if it was an AI generated content. So you got to be careful, but sure. it, it can definitely give you a leg up when you're doing research, when you're trying to come up with just some points for an article that really does accelerate the content creation process. Definitely. Um, so now with, with backlinks in mind, though, as that being, you know, kind of a critical factor, at least in this day and age, how does one evaluate the quality of a backlink source and really are there any specific metrics or indicators that you should look for sure yeah so we actually use a seven step process at the agency when we're building backlinks for clients three parts of that seven step checklist is 
to do with a high level overview of the website. So remember when it comes to getting backlinks, you pretty much want to get links from sites that are vouching for your content, right? And you know, if your site is about using the same example, wireless mouses, right? So your e-commerce store is obviously in the computer online space, right? You sell wireless mouses, probably wireless keyboards and stuff like that. The ideal backlink you should get would be from a site that is relevant to your niche. So maybe a blog that speaks about the best, you know, um, the best key, the best keyboards on the market or the best wireless mouses on the market. That is what we call relevancy. So again, kind of linking back to one of the two biggest ranking factors, relevancy and authority. So if you can get relevancy from your authority backlink as well, that is like a double whammy, as I like to say to my whole team every day. So the number one thing we look at is how relevant the website is. If you can get a link from a relevant website, that's like 10 out of 10. It's not always possible to get a link from a relevant website that is a direct match. So you want to at least make sure the website has a relevant category to your website. So that's the number one thing you look at, relevancy. The second thing is you want to make sure the site has organic traffic. This is really important. There are a lot of shady SEO agencies out there who will go and build you 10 links. And they're actually building you 10 links on sites that they own. They have all these sites in the Namecheap account. And they've just created these random domains that sound good. They look great on the surface level, great website design, but the sites get no traffic, right? So if you're getting links from a site that has traffic, that's a good signal that Google actually likes that site because it's ranking it for keywords, hence why it's getting traffic. So that's another thing when I look at, organic traffic. You can check the organic traffic using tools like SimilarWeb, Ahrefs, or SEMrush, or premium tools. The third thing we look at is what we call DR, which stands for Domain Rating, similar to DA, which is Domain Authority, which Moz uses. DR is a metric that Ahrefs uses, but pretty much we like to get links from sites that have a minimum domain rating of 20 and above. This just this just kind of gives us a better idea of how authoritative this site is. Remember, backlinks are all about acquiring that authority and you know boosting your rankings from your own e-commerce store. So that's three things we look at from a high level overview. So the relevancy of, of the domain, the organic traffic and the domain rating of that site. We then go a little bit further. And I do believe the additional four points we actually look at is a reason why our clients are getting so much good results. And that is related to the traffic. So I mentioned it needs to have 1000 organic visitors a month, but what you want to make sure that the traffic isn't declining. Often you'll see sites with like 1000 visitors and they're just, you know, plain sailing for years to come. And all of a sudden over time, the traffic's going down and down and down. Yeah. If a site is getting less traffic, then that means it's less visible for keywords than it was in comparison to the last one month, two months, three months, right? right? So why is that traffic declining? Has it got a Google penalty? You know, is it doing something shady? Any black hat SEO techniques? If it is, you don't want to get a link from that site because that can have a negative impact on your campaign. So checking the traffic isn't declining is a really like kind of extra bullet point you can do just to go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. This The fifth thing, I'll say the second thing, the second part of our further analysis, which is the fifth thing, is checking the keywords that the site ranks for. Again, another shady tactic that a lot of the SEO agencies are doing is they're building out their own websites, what we call a PBN, a private blog network. Right. They're putting out all these articles that look great on the surface level. They're then buying this expired domain and then redirecting it to the blog. And it looks like it appears for lots of keywords, but in reality, all those keywords are coming from the other domain they've redirected. So again, another check you can do. The sixth thing we look at is what we call OBL, outbound links. So you don't want to be getting links from sites that are linking to so many other pages in the same backlink profile. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're getting a backlink from a site, again, using the same example of wireless keyboards or wireless mouse, you can go onto that website, check the last 10 blog posts, right? If in all of those blog posts, they're linking out to 10 different sites, like they're linking to the site one, two, three, you don't want to get a link from that site because what happens if they link to you? It means all that link juice is then diluted across all of those sites. So Ideally, you want to see blog posts that have two links to outbound sites. That's a good, that's a good thing to look at. Yeah. The seventh and final thing we look at is, again, this is only if you want to go above and beyond, which we do for all our clients anyway, is you want to check the site in what we call Wayback Machine. Mm -hmm. Again, another shady tactic that a lot of the SEO agencies are doing. It's actually crazy how many times I've said shady agencies on this podcast. And <laughs> that that is actually the reality. You know, there's a lot yeah. of snake you know snake oil salesman in the seo industry but yeah. what they'll do is again they'll buy an expired domain so a website that used to exist back in the day you know they'll just buy it for like five hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever mm -hmm. and then they'll go and change the site so the site could have been about you know painting for example like decorating and then they'll have a client that works in the solar panel industry so they'll literally take the old site and then forget all the history and make it all about solar panels and then link to the client site Mm -hmm. Google knows that's not a solar panel related site. It was all about right. painting. How can it change, right? Yeah. So you can actually spot this in a tool called Wayback Machine. And what it does, it shows you what a website used to look back way back in time. So this is our, our seven step analysis. Again, 
quite detailed, quite yeah. thorough. But this way, we know that every link we are building is going to be high quality and it's going to be sustainable as well because there's nothing worse than building links, ranking, and then all of a sudden disappearing from Google the following month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's great. I'm glad that you broke it, broke it down like that. And that's very um, good that you got you guys have that whole seven-step process because there, there's a lot of things that you have to check. It's just not a matter of... Uh, you know, a lot of people get kind of whole caught up and kind of hyped about, let's say, the the DA, the domain authority, or the the DR. Yeah. You know, they they like, okay, wow, it's a it's a DR fifty or a DR seventy, whatever the, the case may be, and they look past all of the other things, the other signals there, like you mentioned, um, the traffic, have they had the, the declining um, organic traffic? You know, there's a lot of a lot of things, all of those things, you definitely have to be careful um, in doing uh, for sure. Now. Naturally, the next kind of question that an e-commerce business is probably wondering is, um, you know, they see that this is a very important aspect of e-commerce SEO, building these links and getting these high quality um, links. And so the next question is going to be, you know, how do you how do you build these links and what what really is the concept of link building outreach? Because it's really going to involve a lot of outreach. You're going to have to go to these other sites, approach them uh, in a way to try to convince them, you know, to allow you to get a link on their high quality site. So um, if you can let me know a little bit about what you guys do or what's the uh, typical method of building high quality links and doing the outreach for that. Sure. So there's obviously lots of different link building strategies out there, niche edits, tiered link building, guest posts, social, like there's so many out there, right? But the right. ones we find to be most effective is the guest posting, which involves a lot of outreach. Okay. So for those who are unaware, guest posting is literally as it sounds you are a guest posting on someone else's website now most people what they'll do is let's imagine you're working with a client who sells electric bikes right so you know the client is in the electric bike niche if a typical agency wants to find a list of sites you can guest post on for this client they will literally just google sites that accept electric bike guest posts or guest post sites for electric anything anything generic right and that's where most people go wrong because because everyone is doing that what happens is you end up getting the same mediocre links as every other agency that is doing the same process. So what we do, which is a little bit different, is we search for informational related keywords related to what our client sells. So again, if our client sells electric bikes, we will search on Google the pros and cons of electric bikes. And typically what you'll find is when you search for informational related keywords around the topic, you'll find lots of niche relevant websites and websites that a lot of people won't find because they're not directly advertising that they offer guest posts on the website. So because, because we have this approach in mind, when we approach these websites, we never do what most sites say and just say, hey, I want to post on your website. How much is it? How much is it going to cost? How much are you going to charge me? Because in reality, it is a, you know, a monetary exchange. You send them content, they upload it, you know, they have a high DR and they give you a backlink. So a lot of it does come down to just paying these sites. However, our process is more custom and bespoke. So what we do is we say, hey, man, and we let you say, hey, man. We never say, hey, site owner, because we like to be as conversational and natural as possible, right? Yeah, yeah. We say, hey, man, we just finished reading your post on XYZ. And we'll see, list out the post from seeing one of the recent blog posts on the website. And we'll say, you would totally agree with what you said in ABC. So making it really custom and bespoke. We then go on to talk about family. I know it sounds a bit weird, but we say, me and my family are a big fan of electric bikes. And I believe I could write up a really cool post for your website. Here's some title examples that I think work really well for your readers. Let me know if you think any would be a good fit. And this works really well because we're not just saying, I'm going to write a blog post about electric bikes. Like we're just saying, hey, me and my family are massive fans of electric bikes. And when you're a reader or a site owner and you read that, it gives you a perception that, hey, maybe they've got a different insight that no one else has. And, you know, they see you as now, you know, you're bringing value to them. And it's not just you giving value. It's not just them giving value to you by, you know, featuring your blog content. So our approach is very custom and bespoke and it works really, really well. But the whole process is... I must admit, there's a lot of back and forth. You have to find the website. You then have to find the email address, reach out to them, probably send them two different edits of the content, get them to approve it, wait for them to upload it. Then they send you the URL back. Then you've got your final URL to show the clients. It's like a lot of steps back and forth. Yeah, It's probably the most challenging part of SEO, if I'm completely honest. Mm -hmm. And I also believe it's the reason why a lot of agencies kind of cut corners because they know how much hard work it is and Unfortunately, yeah. you know, this is the one thing you can't be cutting corners on because SEO is all about quality over quantity. Right, right. Yeah, very true. It's 
Um, even though it's a process that is uh, heavily involved, there's a lot of back and forth, like you said, drafting these guest posts, having them, you know, prove it. Maybe there's some changes. So there's a, a lot of that, you know, getting yes. your writers to do something quality and then finally getting that posted and then getting the link back. So it's it takes time, but definitely is, is worthwhile. I mean, another beauty of the guest post and depending on the arrangement that you have and depending on the site that you're posting it on, um, it can also allow you to get multiple links. So let's say you do have sure. multiple properties, um, different sites that you want to link back to, you can definitely include multiple links in there. So it's it's more than just kind of a one-off thing as opposed to just, sure. you know, um, uh, negotiating just, you know, one link. This gives you the ability to get multiple links in just one article. So um, yeah, really, really good stuff there. Um, one of the things that I guess I wanted to kind of touch on as well, because a lot of the, I think the e-commerce businesses that are going to be listening may, let's say they don't use an agency. They're doing this all in-house. Maybe they've got a digital marketing person that, you know, is going to go ahead and go through and do a link building campaign and, um, you know, maybe does a fair amount of due diligence, but he ends up getting some links and some sites that, you know, just are no good. Maybe they fall under some of those categories that you mentioned where somebody just uh, purchased a site where it used to be branded as something else. They totally switched it. Uh, maybe they've also got a site where the traffic is good now, but the, the traffic is declining. And so I know all of these things are going to affect your SEO. And maybe you, you take a hit as far as your traffic is concerned. Maybe you get a penalty on Google. Um, once that happens, how does a you know how does a uh, business recover like what would be the steps to to kind of get back where you were um and to overcome either a google penalty or just uh you know the de decline in traffic because you're linking to some you know shady <laughs> shady websites for <laughs> for lack of a better word yeah that is a really really good question and we actually just dealt with that literally 3 weeks ago so we okay. do like what we call quarterly campaign review calls so every okay. quarter so March, pretty much now, the end of end of Q1, right? We do calls of our clients and just give them an update on how the campaigns go in and what we plan on doing in the next coming quarter, right? And the client we took on was actually in November. They are a dentist in London. I won't name them, but they ended the contract with the previous SEO agency in October, I believe, um, the month before. Um, you know, they pretty much came on board of us and we was doing every, everything we knew which was right, right? Building the high quality backlinks, doing the relevancy through the blogs, fixing the technical audits, technical, everything. We've done everything perfect, but we're struggling to get results. And normally we get results quite quick because we're following a proven process, right? <laughs> However, when we looked at the site in a bit more detail and looked at the client's backlink profile, we noticed they had so many spammy backlinks. So I said to the client, hey, do you mind sending me the report that the previous agency sent you? I just want to see what type of links they were building. Mm -hmm. Of course, I could see it all in AHS, but I wanted just to see the work that's been done in the past. Right. He sent me across the PDF document and the other agency built 20 backlinks in one month. Mm -hmm. all to the same url and oh, wow. every backlink had the same anchor text so for those who are unaware the anchor mm -hmm. text is pretty much the hyperlink text the yeah. clickable text used to link one website to another website so yeah that is very spammy and unnatural and i will say to clients like if you think about it what are the chances of your website acquiring 20 links in one month and yeah. all 20 links are going to the same page and yeah. all 20 links are linking to you saying the same <laughs> it just doesn't happen yeah. so the traffic, unfortunately for us, is when we took them on board, the traffic was declining. Right. And for us, it didn't look great. It's like, we, you know, we've we've come on board with click sites, our traffic's going down. What the hell? And I was like, well, we've actually done some further analysis and, you know, mm -hmm. we've identified the problem. So what we did do to rectify this, and I'm glad to say it's been really, really good now. Maybe I can send you a screenshot. You can put it below the podcast notes or something like that. But sure. Pretty much what we did, we submitted a disavow file. So okay. a disavow file is a file you submit to Google and you basically tell Google to ignore these backlinks. And okay. it's a really good practice to do because if you have anything shady linking to your website, you don't want to be associated with that. And of course, sometimes a spammy site can link to you and you don't own that site. So you, you have no control whether the backlink stays up or goes down. Right. But what you can do is say to Google, hey, I don't agree with that. Can you please not count that when evaluating my site's ranking? So that's pretty much what we did. We disavowed 422 domains, not backlinks, mm -hmm. domains in total. So yeah, over 400 domains, some domains linked to the clients like multiple times. I think yeah. there's about 3,000 backlinks in total. But yeah, we pretty much done that at the end of February. 
Okay. And already now we're seeing really, really good results in Google. They're ranking back on page one for like the London dentist, best dentist, best dentist London, all the variations. And they haven't done that in like literally months before. You know, I think last last year summer was the earliest they've been ranking for those keywords. So it's been really, really impactful. It's made a massive impact on the business. And it's really nice to see. And the reason I mentioned why we've just gone through this is because there was a Google update that came out last week, March the 15th, 2023. I don't know how, how often you follow Google updates, probably not as often as me. <laughs> I'm right, quite sad. Right. I'm checking it all the time. Right. But a Google update came out last uh, last week, a core, algor- a core algorithm update where Google mm-hmm. pretty much just, you know, retweaked the algorithm to make sure they're serving the best results. Okay. They obviously identified that we submitted a disavow file and saw that what we are doing is really high quality work. And okay. now the client is winning. So yeah, okay. SEO is is amazing. It does take a while to kick in sometimes. Yeah. And if you've had bad SEO done in the past, you do, you know, sometimes have a hill to climb. Mm-hmm. But I do believe it's definitely worth, you know, if you can get an expert, even if it's, a, even if it's on a consultant basis just to quickly quickly run his eyes over your site his or her eyes over your site and give the input because sometimes you may think a backlink is bad mm-hmm. and you might disavow it but that backlink may actually be giving you a boost and you know doing you good for your seo efforts yeah 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 good stuff it's and it's good to know like you said that even if you do get into trouble like uh the one client that you had there's there's ways to recover from that and so sure. that whole disavow process is something where it's, it's good to know because it would it would seem like you're kind of, it's out of your control. Like if you're linking to a site, it's a bad site. They've done some spammy stuff, like you said. They're linking all to the same site with the same anchor text. Um, you know, how do you get from under that? And so that disavow file is definitely a great way to to do that. And one quick question about that: um, I guess it's on up to Google um, and their whole, I guess, team or however they process that to determine if they're going to acknowledge to all of those requests. Is it in your case or your experience, do they typically acknowledge all of those disavow requests or is it just kind of a case by case basis? Yeah, no. So they typically do actually, they, they typically do actually acknowledge everything you submit. They never used okay. to do back in the day, you'd submit okay. like 10 domains and, you know, they say Google will, you know, consider this next time we, you know, next time, next time we evaluate your rankings and it's like, you're yeah. just sitting there thinking, you know, has anything yeah. happened? Like, has my <laughs> right. gone up? Has my impression gone up? Well, what's going on? But <laughs> right, no, right. I could definitely say with confidence, yeah, right now, Google, at, at this time, because Google change what they do every right. single, literally day, you know, there's always tweaks to the algorithm and how they work internally, right? Sure. But pretty much, you know, right now it's definitely working really, really well. I will okay. say, if you do plan on submitting this of our file, never get too aggressive. Always start off quite cautious. Maybe if you think, you know, if you think you've got 10 spammy links, don't go and submit all 10 straight away unless you're actually convinced that these are all spammy. Start off with like Absolutely. five, see how your rankings are doing. You know, if they're going in the right direction, you can mm-hmm. add more. If you're seeing no impact, then you can add way more. If you're seeing the opposite, it's going even worse. And maybe you disavow something that you shouldn't have done. So right. disavowing is definitely, you know, definitely a tricky thing. And it just, you know, it just comes with experience. The more science you see, the more you can really spot that's bad. That shouldn't be there and, you know, tweak your processes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good to know um, that you kind of start small and then just kind of, kind of go from there. And it's good to know that they're a little bit more responsive now than in the past. Sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Joshua, as we get ready to wrap things up, I wanted to see if you can um, kind of on the other side of things, share a case study, uh, more of a kind of success story from your own agency or just in general that you're familiar with where, you know, powerful ba- backlinks played really a significant role in improving, you know, an e-commerce store's overall visibility and their sales. Sure. So what I'll do, I'll share one of our clients in the US, because I know for a lot of your audience is US based and you're US based as well. Sure. So that, that'd be nice. I work with a client called Cutthroat Club. You can, you know, anyone listening can check them out. You can Google them yourself, cutthroatclub.com. So they are obviously a DTC brand that sells men's shaving products. So the guys behind this brand are actually e-commerce investors. So they acquire sites, they add them to the portfolio, increase traffic and revenue, and then often sell them for more money. So they were already doing well with all the other e brands they had but they were struggling to acquire targeted traffic to this store in particular. And there's nothing worse than owning the e-commerce store, not generating sales, right? Trust me, I know I've been there before, right? So <laughs> right. They, actually, they actually found us online um, as our site actually ranks, I think number three already now for e-commerce SEO services. Again, just goes to show how important SEO is, even for us as an SEO agency. Right. So they found us online, they booked a call with us and they pretty much went through all the problems they were facing and what they wanted to achieve, right? Which is pretty much just more visibility for all their men shaving products and generating more organic sales. So we listened to them. We put together a bespoke SEO campaign. 
the key word in there is bespoke, not a generic package of just one blog, two links, and you know, based on what you think work, based on what you think works well, we actually analyze the competition, see how many backlinks they had, and then put out a plan which we knew, hey, if we build 12 links a month, four months, we'll have 48, and then we'll be in a similar ballpark with the top ranking sites. So we put together a bespoke campaign for them, and you know, it was heavily based on backlinks, which is good because the whole podcast is about backlinks. These guys already had decent content, right? You know, they know men's shaving products inside out. They had a full-time writer. The content was really, really good, as you'll see if you check out their website. The only piece of the puzzle they were missing was the authority from the backlinks. Relevancy was very well full established. So what we did is we built them 48 links over the course of four months, 12 links every single month. And now the client is ranking on page one for over 60 different keywords. I'll give you some examples. Like if you or any of your listeners Google cutthroat razor blades, these guys will be ranking number one, cutthroat club. Search for cutthroat razor, um, cutthroat straight razor, straight razor set. Again, another different keyword, like you know, this, you know, another different keyword of like products they offer. Right. You know, bar- barber blade razors, all these different keywords we're targeting. They're now breaking onto page one. And it's just really good because I was speaking to the owner again last week as part of our Campley review campaign. Oh, sorry, I missed that. I'm talking too fast. So again, three, two, one. This is actually really good because I was speaking to the owner last week as part of our weekly campaign review calls mm-hmm. and orders are up 73% compared to the previous period and revenue is up 414% compared to the previous year. So wow. the client wow. is really, really happy and yeah. we're actually already in talks to handle SEO for more of the econ brand. So yeah, really, yeah. really nice campaign and just goes to show again just how powerful backlinks are if you build yeah. them correctly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's a great testimonial. And thank you for sharing that. I mean, it just no really kind of definitely goes to to show um, how this it all works. You know, if you, if you do the work and you follow, uh, you know, some of the steps that you mentioned as far as, uh, you know, identifying the right backlinks and then and being really kind of method, methodic, uh, methodical about it and, uh, you know, getting the right ones. Um, it can definitely work out for sure. For sure. Sure. Well, yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, Joshua. And uh, I've definitely learned a lot. Um, you know, yeah, this awesome. whole SEO um, world is ever changing, as we all know. <laughs> Nobody really has a crystal ball as to how Google's algorithm is going to change. But, you know, we do know that um, there are some key things that um, are always that have always been in place and they're always going to be ranking factors. And backlinks sure. is going to is one of those. And like you said, even in this whole world of AI, it's probably going to be more relevant than ever. Um, I, I really totally agree with that for sure. So uh, it's good to know we now have some some solid strategies to mm-hmm. to create a, you know some solid backlinks for our for our businesses. Um, well, I'd like to always close things out just so our audience, uh, you know, can get to know you a little bit better. Um, if you don't mind sharing one closing fun fact about yourself that you think uh, we'd be interested to know. Sure. I guess probably not that fun, but I guess it's interesting. Um, so my birthday is on Christmas Day, 25th okay. of December. Wow. And my fiance's birthday is also the 25th of December. So we oh, wow. have the same birthday as his <laughs> birthday. So, I mean, that's probably not that like interesting. It's more like, wow that's weird but i mean an interesting <laughs> fact related to seo right yeah. um again i'll give you some seo ones right so like i'm currently the number one ranked seo consultant in london so if you google mm-hmm. seo consultant mm-hmm. london you'll see click slash ranks number one again just evidence of what we do and something that no one else can say in the uk is that i've actually been hired by the british government for seo training <laughs> so oh, wow that was <laughs> okay. very interesting i think that was a very interesting day and they actually found us online they googled seo training in london Again, mm-hmm. we do lots of SEO for all of our pages. They found us on page one, yeah. got in touch and yeah, went to the office in Canary Wharf, which is a place in London and yeah, hosted the whole training for the whole okay. team. <laughs> that, was, that was quite cool. Good stuff, man. Well, yeah, you, you definitely mentioned some three solid fun facts. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't look, I wouldn't um, make light of the fact that yeah, you, both you and your fiance have the birthday on Christmas. Um, I mean, yeah. that's that's huge in, in and of itself. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, that's like a mega, yeah. mega celebration. I mean, it's I, I'm sure it's going to be difficult to figure out how do you how do you kind of capture everyone's celebration into that day? Or you probably got to, you know, it's, spread it's, that out over like a week, I, I would imagine. It is crazy every yeah. year. It's like happy birthday, happy birthday. I was like, oh, OK, we need to make sure <laughs> when we have a kid. That yeah. the kid doesn't come any round any anywhere around the month of December because I can't have a kid on the same birthday as me. Right. And my so that's it, the worst thing ever. That would be pretty crazy too. But uh, <laughs> great fun fact though, and yeah, thank you for sharing that and congrats right. on the success. Like you said, uh, being able to rank for those uh, keywords and uh, be successful in London. That's uh, that's that's some good stuff. 
Um, well, uh, you know, if um, our listeners want to now pick your brain anymore and kind of reach out to you and see either how they can help, how you guys can help them out as a business, or, you know, you can kind of impart some wisdom to them, what would be the best way for people to to reach out to you? Sure. So yeah, if you're an e-commerce store owner listening to this podcast and you're serious about growing your store's revenue, then I invite you to book a free SEO strategy call with us. What we'll do, we'll jump on a Google Meet call with you, just how we did with our other client, Cutthroat Club. We'll learn more about your business and your goals, and we'll put together a custom SEO campaign strategy for you that we know will allow you to achieve those goals. It's pretty much a mini SEO audit we'll do of your website right there in real time on the call. And we can, we'll can literally show you exactly where you're going wrong, right? You can either work with us and get all that stuff fixed, or you can take the strategy and go and implement it yourself. Either way, as long as we're helping your listeners, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, great. That's that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for offering that. We'll be sure to include the uh, the necessary links for people to take advantage of that in our show notes. And um, yeah, good stuff. I definitely encourage people to to take you up on that uh, that free consultation. You really can't beat that. Um, oh, well, so- well, well, Joshua, it's been great talking to you. I, like I said, I've definitely learned a lot. I know our listeners have as well. And we definitely appreciate you coming on today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com slash resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level. 